Over the past decade or so, I've written over 20 novels, and I've also created a 24-chapter plot outline to help authors uh, write fiction. And although I've played around with a lot of writing software, I've never really found anything that worked as well as Microsoft Word, so that's what I use to write all of my books. I've tried Scrivener and a bunch of other software, uh, but I haven't found anything that does all the things that I want and is convenient enough to actually use. But this one is something new called Scribble.so. I have reviewed a lot of writing software. Sometimes I don't get around to making a review video because I don't think it's really uh, something that I think will be useful for writers. But this one has a lot of cool features, and I'm going to make a little video showing you what some of those features are so that if you're looking for a writing software to help you to be more productive and stay on track with your writing goals, uh, I think this is a pretty strong contender, maybe even a Scrivener replacement. So when you first log in, it's going to look something like this, where you have all your book projects and it has some covers. The reason this looks like kind of crappy art is that there's an option I'll show you later to generate artwork for your covers or your characters. Uh, right now, that's based in Dolly 2. Dolly 2 is not really the best image uh, maker. Midjourney does a lot better, but Dolly 3 is coming out or has come out. Dolly 3 is, is quite a bit better. So the ability to generate um, artwork for your characters or your scenes to help you with, you know, your your description and keeping track of who, who, what everybody looks like or what they're wearing or where, uh, how the scene is laid out. I think that is a useful feature in itself, just adding images to the different parts of your book. And then it has all of this stuff up here, but I think this is a pretty new software, so some of the things are still sort of um, in construction, uh, mostly I would use it for writing novels. And I think one of the most useful features is this part where it says days in a row, weeks in a row. It's pretty simple, but just having something that affirms you've been doing the work, just logging in and trying to see this uh, record of the work that you've been doing, I think that's a really positive uh, motivator. And if I look at my insights, I get a little calendar like this where it'll show me all the days that I've logged in and done a little bit of work. Uh, this is something a lot of writers do with a real calendar. They just add an X on the days that they've you know, written, whether it's 500 words or a couple thousand words. Uh, it's pretty hard to start and create a writing habit unless you have some kind of a visual um, marking where you can see the long-term cumulative effects and there are some apps that will just keep track of your daily writing habits, but they're not really suited to actually write a book. And that's what this one is really built for. So I'm going to see if I can just kind of walk through the steps. I'm going to add a new book. Here you can add the type of book, uh, novel, title, target word count. Mine tend to be around 90,000 words. Target daily writing habit. Um, I like to push myself. If I'm really like for NaNoWriMo, I'll probably do three or 4,000 words a day. But generally, even 2,000 words a day, I get burnt out. Um, and the problem with shooting for 2,000 words a day and then avoiding it and not doing anything, uh, you might want to do like 500 words a day because you want to set a target that you're going to achieve, even if it's a lower target. And then the theme is something you can research. I've got other videos about theme. I think inside of the software, it does walk you through the terminology a little bit, so there's a little bit of education built in. Um, I'm going to skip this for now, the book theme and the book summary. And then I could upload a book cover or I can generate an AI book cover. There is still some controversy with um, AI book covers right now, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend using AI art for a published book, but as something that's just a placeholder while you're working on your book, it can be really nice. Uh, the main issue with this particular feature is I don't think the quality of the art is up to scratch with other tools. So it might give you something, but it probably won't be amazing. Midjourney does much better images. And like I mentioned, Dolly 3 also has much better quality. So my guess is that they will upgrade to a newer version, and then this could be a really useful tool. But for now, like the quality of the art isn't great, but it kind of just, you know, gives you a direction that's something you can look at. Uh, but you could also upload your own book cover or image. You can make your own art in Midjourney and then upload it here. But that's enough for right now. I'm going to create this book. It didn't save that art, so I tried again, and this time I'm going to set it as the cover so that it shows up. I can now edit the book details, or I can add collaborators. Some people do collaborative writing. Maybe if you want to write 
with a co-writer or you want to bring in an editor or something to work together, um, that's something you could do here so that more than one person could work on the same document. Uh, and I could edit the details or just go right into writing. Once you've started a project, it'll look something like this. So you've got a left-hand menu, a side menu for the chapters, and then another menu over here. It's a little bit cluttered with all of this stuff, uh, but there's a lot of features. So real quick over here, um, when I'm writing a chapter, it'll keep track of the estimated minutes I've been writing and the estimated pages, the word target, the word count. That's kind of useful to have at a glance. Uh, but I can also add subplots, uh, which you're going to have to set up separately. So we'll come back to that a little bit uh, later. You can also add little notes for this particular chapter. Uh, here's a chapter checklist. This is similar to the chapter checklist that, that I've made. It's not exactly the same, uh, but I like to have a checklist of uh, things that happen in every chapter just to make sure that you've got all the right pieces. So this is just a, a nice little um, thing that you can check off when you feel like you've met these goals. And then there's a place for visual inspiration. So if I wanted to make some fantasy art for every chapter so that I kind of keep track of the mood or the feeling or the location or the setting details, um, I could upload a picture here. And then in terms of writing, it's broken down into a four-act structure. Uh, so if you're familiar with my 24-chapter plot outline, the reason that it's effective is that most other plot outlines are based on like a normal three-act journey. Uh, and for TV or movies, it might work fine. But for a novel, the middle of the book is twice as long as the other two parts. And most authors don't know what to do with Act 2 because it feels fl like weak or flimsy because they don't have enough content in the middle that's dramatic. So I have a four-act structure that's set up like this where each of these has the same number of chapters, which gives it a more balanced, uh, full uh, resolution for your fiction. But I'm going to go up here to add chapter first, and then I get this other menu. So this part um, is basically from my 24 chapter plot outline. It's just that you get some education and information while you're setting up your chapters that might help you to figure out what kind of things you might want to have in that chapter. I know a lot of people are pantsers. Maybe you don't really love plotting. Uh, but it can really help you to finish a strong book, even if it doesn't feel quite as fun and magical to discover where your story is going. The chances that you get to a solid book at the end um, and that you don't get stuck in the middle or demotivated or lost or procrastinate because you're not sure what happens next, uh, there's a lot of benefits to using some kind of a plot outline. And uh, I do think my 24-chapter plot outline is one of the most... Um, complete things available. So my 24 chapter plot outline is based on the plot dot, which is sort of a nine point hero's journey, which um, has these points. And these are pretty similar to Save the Cat or the Hero's Journey or some of the other ones that you might be more familiar with. Although my version is a little bit different in the second plot point, second pinch point, uh, basically because a lot of people just go straight to the final battle and then there's not enough points towards the end to give it a really satisfying resolution. So there are 24 chapters, and out of those 24 chapters, eight of those chapters are one of these uh, major plot points or major turning points. So it helps to kind of mark which of these are the main ones and which of them are the smaller supporting chapters. There is sort of a guide to the dramatic tension of your story, but I think it's based on your own rating. It doesn't rate your writing for you, so you'd have to choose, you know, how tense is this, this chapter, and then it'll map that out for you. Um, but it's nice to, you know, figure out what's going to happen in this chapter. Not a huge thing, but just very simply, you know, what's, what is this chapter building towards? What's the thing that happens? What I personally do when I write a new novel is I'll just open up my 24 chapter plot outline, uh, which I can actually show you here on my website. So this is what it looks like. There's, you know, four sections, and then out of these uh, chapters, there are these red markings for the major turning points that kind of hold everything together. And then there's also a difference between the external A story and the internal B 
story that helps you with your protagonist's motivation and uh, character arc. But I've gotten this into a Word document, so I'll just download or I'll open up a, a blank Word document with these chapters built in, and I'll just start brainstorming, you know, for this particular story, how is this going to work out? And so in, Scrib in Scribble, um, it's giving you kind of the opportunity to summarize what this chapter is about, but it's also giving you a little bit of guidance. You know, if this is um, part of Act 1, then it's probably going to have, you know, these six chapters, and then these are going to be your major plot points where the important stuff happens, and that'll kind of help you get a sense of uh, what might happen in this chapter and whether or not you're you know, sort of following this template. You don't need to follow any kind of a template, but the majority of commercial popular fiction, uh, not only novels, but TV shows or movies or whatever, they have a sort of balanced turning point. It's the most emotional way to get reader buy-in and have a satisfying story. So um, you don't have to use any kind of a template, but it does help you to finish uh, a strongly balanced um, story. The last time I was playing with this, um, I would have had to go through manually and fill out this section for each of the 24 chapters. Uh, and I mentioned that that's a little bit too much work if I just wanted to use my template. Um, so they've added this feature where you can just import the 24 chapter template basically. So it'll set up all those sections for you. And then you could go in and edit each of those chapters instead of having to, you know, do it 24 times. But I'll show you what this looks like. So if I've kind of set this up when I do my brainstorming, I, I mean, I'm really used to using Microsoft Word, so it's easier for me to just be in one Microsoft Word document and just go through the 24 steps and brainstorm the things that are going to happen. Um, however, like I mentioned, being able to see how many words you've written, how much time you've spent writing, um, and then your like daily progress, monthly progress, that's something that I don't get out of Microsoft Word. So that's where I think uh, some software like this can really add an improvement. So now that I've set up one chapter, uh, it looks like this. And I'm actually going to edit this one a little bit uh, because it is a plot point. It's the ordinary world. So now that shows up. And then if I wanted to just go and write this chapter, I would go here. If I want to add a new chapter, like I mentioned, um, you can name your chapters or not name your chapters. You can also just choose you know, what number your chapter is. And this is still Act 1. So what happens if I finish these six chapters and I get to the beginning, you know, after the first plot point, the point of no return, then I start going over to Act 2A, and then this changes. So now I've got the next six chapters, um, the next two major plot points. So this is just a little bit more of a structured, you know, it doesn't tell you what to write at all. It just kind of gives you an indication of where you might want to be in your story and make sure that you have dramatic turning points to keep momentum. So this is a process I would just go through. Chapter 2B is the next six chapters. And then Act 3 is the final six chapters. So that's kind of just like an easy way of keeping track. Um, but like I mentioned, you'd, you'd have to do this for each of the chapters. And I think it might be a little bit easier. It looks like now, since I've already started, uh, now that button isn't there anymore. So when I start a new chapter, a new project, you might want to just click on that button and import the 24 chapters, uh, because then like you would have all the 24 chapters here that are already set up, and you can just go in and start editing them. Something else I haven't really played with a lot is that when you're working on it, uh, you can go and check whether it's a rough draft or, you know, cohesion flow prose balance, pacing, final draft. So depending on which revision you're on, um, I've got a four or five step revision process that looks a little bit like this. I think mine is a little different. Uh, so I'm particularly fond of the way that I do it because I've spent thousands of hours trying to figure out the best process. I was trying to fix uh, this part because it says the target is 180,000 words. I'm not sure where it's getting that number. So I think that might just be a mistake. Uh, I'll let them know that seems like there's an issue or maybe I filled something out wrong because uh, mine should be 90,000 words and this is double. I'm not sure why it's doubling it, uh, but it keeps track of the pages and the hours. This is what I'm most interested in because I would love to know like how many hours it takes me to write a book and I don't really have a way of measuring that. So if it just keeps track of, you know, 
how many hour, how much time I put into every chapter and how much time I put into the, the book in total. Uh, I think that could be really useful. And then, like I mentioned over here, it's going to have the, the word target, the word count goals. Um, and then when you're actually writing, you do have this big menu here, which is pretty standard. Um, but you don't really need to use any of this stuff because you won't be doing a lot of formatting when you're writing your book. You really want just a simple writing interface. But there are some neat features here. So I can click on this icon and add characters to my people and places. Um, to do this, I'm going to need to add my characters. So I would go over here to people and places. This is something I, I'm not sure if I'd want to do. In the beginning, it might be more useful after I've got a rough draft and I'm trying to keep track of everybody. I might go back in and, and fill this out because you may not really know which characters are in your book until you've written a rough draft. But here I can add a character and then I have this new panel where I can add you know, information. I can choose if it's a major character, secondary, or background. And then if I give it a little bit of description, Oh, I can also choose if it's the protagonist side or the antagonist side. Um, and then I can generate an AI avatar. And this is a picture that it came up with. Uh, so like I mentioned earlier, this is sort of a fun novelty feature. But as a comparison, it's nowhere close to the quality that I can get with Stable Diffusion or Midjourney or some of the other um, AI art generators. So the, the difference in quality is really astounding, um, you know, something like this compared to something like this. Uh, I do think the technology will update. I think if they update to Dolly 3, then you're going to see much better quality, in which case, you know, this is going to be a lot more useful. Um, but I could also set this all up and just upload my own avatars that I've made in other places, uh, and that would be fine. So now that I've saved a character um, and I've got some details, you might also want to, you know, keep track of green eyes, blue eyes, blonde hair, that stuff gets confusing if you um, are trying to keep track of all the details, especially over a longer series. Now that I have my, my people and I go back here to my writing pad and get into my first chapter, um, now I could select the characters that are in this particular chapter. And now you'll see the little icon or the little image up here. So if I had like five characters um, in every cha in this chapter, it would just show me real quick which characters are in the chapter. I could click on that to see the picture. This should, when I click on it, it should bring up like the character details as well and not only the picture. So I think that's kind of fun. Um, and then it's also got two features here, which are something you won't really find anywhere else. Um, although AI writing tools are becoming um, ubiquitous, they're really going to be everywhere. They're already inside of a lot of editing tools like Grammarly or ProWritingAid. They're already inside of uh, Google Docs and soon to be added to Microsoft Word. So it's going to be increasingly common to have AI tools built into the writing software you already use. Um, but these two are reimagine a paragraph. So I could paste in maybe a tricky paragraph I'm having some trouble with, um, and I could get it rewritten in a different style. Uh, these particular styles I don't think are very well suited to writing fiction. I actually have my, my own tool, which I need to rename because people pointed out the problems with StorySpook, uh, but this is ghostwriter.com, ghost the writer. And you can add your text here and then just edit it into a different style. And because I've done a lot of back-end prompt work, um, the styles that you get, the output that you get, is going to be much better quality here. Uh, so you can put in your rough draft, and it can give you a well-written final draft that might really speed up your editing process. But this isn't really meant to you know, rewrite your whole book in another style. It's just for like... Maybe you know that one paragraph, maybe you wrote uh, a rough draft and it's kind of there, but there's, you just feel like there's something wrong with it. You want to try out some different things. Um, you can put in a paragraph and then spin the button. And it'll give you another version. Uh, PseudoWrite, which is another tool I think is really great for AI writing features. Um, it also does something like this, but for writing aid, and like I mentioned, I think a lot of it's going to become really common where in whatever manuscript you're working on, you can just say rewrite this. 
Uh, or for example, I need a different synonym or a different verb or word that means this thing and it'll just give you a pop-up box with alternatives so you don't need to go to Google and look, look for synonyms. But it's also got this uh, research tool so if you are stuck and you just want to ask a question you can just ask a question and hopefully get the answer. I think this is just it's probably running on like ChatGPT or DaVinci 3. So I tried asking a hard question, which is how much did dentists in the Middle Ages get paid? And it can't really answer that particular question. So I tried another one, which is how deep can humans swim? And it just gives me an answer. So I don't know if you've ever tried to, you know, when you're trying to write in your story and then you have a question, you go onto Google, it takes you a half hour to find anything because it's a bunch of, you know, long articles that don't really answer. So this is just a really quick, really short answer to a specific question. Uh, the idea is that you could spend more time doing the work, especially if you're on like a deadline timer and you're doing a writing sprint, instead of um, uh, getting lost on Google and losing all your motivation, you can just stay on the program, ask your questions, and, and keep going. I did mention you don't really need all of this formatting stuff here, and also that the four panel menu is a little bit clunky when you're doing the work, but they've got a dis distraction free um, writing over here and they've also put in a writing timer uh, which is pretty useful because this looks a lot more like what I would want in um, a writing software and the advantage of writing in a software like this is uh, you can use any of your devices so you can switch back and forth you just log into Scribble and you can always have your writing there instead of needing to move it around um, but I really like the writing timer so now I can just set set a 20 minute timer and now I can just start writing. Um, there's different versions of software that lets you do writing sprints and makes it a little bit uh, gamified, like uh, Write or Die or the World's Most Dangerous Writing App. And the idea is that it gets more and more stressful. And if you stop writing or you stop typing or you slow down or whatever, um, then you know it turns red or there's some penalty I think write or die, it'll it'll even start deleting your words. Um, another one I like is eyeless, which is eyeless, uh, and you can't even you can't even see what you're typing. Uh, which there have been studies where basically if you don't look at your screen and you just focus on writing, um, eyeless also doesn't let you backspace. You can't back and delete. So I found that like when I'm typing, uh, I'll spend thirty percent of my writing time deleting a. a a letter or punctuation because I did it wrong and then continuing forward. And the idea with something like Eyeless is that it forces you to always continue writing forward and not um, slowing down to fix your mistakes. So I would experiment with different things. Um, I do think that this is, you know, good enough as a default uh, writing pad with a little bit of a timer so that you can do writing sprints. I personally usually use um, uh, an iPhone app called AI Writer, which is like a very small screen on your iPhone with a Bluetooth keyboard where you, you can't focus on like the whole thing. It doesn't show you the entire chapter. You just see like one sentence at a time. So you're always kind of focused on the current uh, phrase or sentence and then it fades out as you move down. Uh, I found that to be really effective, but then I also need to put on like an external timer because it doesn't have a timer built in like this one does. But you could also write uh, with AI Writer or your iPhone and then just import all those words, which is what I typically tend to do. I'll do it on my phone and then I'll import it into uh, uh, Dropbox and then put it in my Microsoft Word document, which has already got all the chapters laid out. Um, but you could do the same thing here, basically, although... I'm not quite sure, like if you're not writing in this program, it probably won't keep track of your hours, although it probably will, like it won't keep track of your hours or your minutes, I, I suppose. Um, I'm not actually sure how it works because it doesn't seem to be counting the time yet, and I wonder if I start writing, if it's going to start counting the time. So I did a little, I did a little bit of writing, um, and my word count updated. It took a minute but my word count updated. Um, and now it says 0 0.01 hours, although my minutes hasn't updated yet. I have a suspicion that maybe I misinterpreted 
what this means, the hours, the minutes. Um, potentially, this is the reading time and not the writing time, which makes more sense. Um, so, you know, if I have 20,000 words or whatever, 5,000 words, it would tell me um, the reading time or the average reading time or the estimated minutes for someone to read a chapter. So that might be the case. I personally might be more interested in my writing time, but I, that might be really hard to keep track of uh, because like even if I leave this screen open, I'm not writing all the time. So I'm not sure if, you know, a software could really keep track of uh, the time that you're actually typing. Anyway, this is mostly what uh, the software looks like in terms of writing a novel. And I think the benefits are that you can keep track of all the different chapters and that there's some organizational prompts to help you to uh, organize and structure your story. It's a little bit cleaner than some other things I've seen, and I do like that it will keep track long term of your writing progress. Uh, but there's also some other features over here. So your story base, which is here, um, gives you the story foundation and the pitch. So you could use this formula to create a quick pitch for your story. Um, I do have something on Creative Indie that maybe I'll link to or you can find uh, where I break down all the different, you know, how to write a blurb, basically. If you search for how to write a blurb, there's a lot of these different formulas that tell you how to summarize your main story conflict into, um, you know, dramatic, sellable elevator pitch. And that's kind of what this does. There's also this key steps worksheet that you could go through. This is more of a character-driven story template. Um, I tend to focus more on plot-driven story and not character-driven story. So some people might really like this. It really helps you develop your characters. Uh, it is kind of important because a lot of writers, they don't have, like you definitely need your characters to have um, maybe not a psychological flaw or moral flaw, but they are really powerful if you do have this information. Uh, you do want your character to need something and to be prevented from getting the thing so that you always have momentum going forward. But this is basically just like a, a, a long, a pretty long worksheet. Um, so just filling out this worksheet could give you a, a pretty strong basis for your novel. Uh, and on a more like general, easy level, there's the theme, which is your your protagonist wants something, but somebody else is stopping them. Over here, there's the chapter order, which I think means I can just drag and drop my chapters around if I want to. So this is where uh, you could do that. People don't always know that um, you could do this. Uh, you can do this in Microsoft Word also, which is what I typically do. But once I've like outlined my chapters, I kind of know where everything is going to fit, so I don't tend to do a lot of dra dragging and dropping, um, but it is useful if you have a bunch of different scenes and you want to move one particular section somewhere else. So for example, in one of the novels that I'm working on right now, I might have like a, a list of the things that happens in the scene to keep me on track, and then when I'm going through, I've got a lot of comments of things that I'll add, uh, but if I wanted to, I could drag and drop these chapters around also, so it's possible to do in Microsoft Word. Not everybody knows that you can do that. You just need a, a chapter heading style for the section um, up on top, and then it shows up in the navigation pane, and then you can drag and drop them around. People like Scrivener often just for this feature, uh, but for me, Microsoft Word does just about everything. And then there's this uh, tension flow section where if you rate all the different chapters with how much tension that each chapter has, then you'll see this kind of um, chart that will show you, you know, the balance of your tension because there should be some, you know, ebbing and flowing of dramatic tension. I've seen stuff like this that's automated uh, where you can upload your book and it will just kind of tell you what your scene is like or where the dramatic tension is, like it can just make a chart based on your actual story. I did people and places earlier, but I skipped over the places. So with the places, it's pretty similar where you can add a location 
and just grab the setting and then if you want to generate an image or upload your own image. So I added a little location here and now I think if I go back to my story base. Uh, anyway, I'm going to skip that one for now and move on to plot visualization. So this is uh, basically like a notepad visual board where you can see um, once you've finished all your chapters, you can see kind of at a glance the, the summary of your chapter, uh, what part of the story it is, uh, the characters that are in that chapter, how much you've written of that chapter. And I can also go down here to subplots. So this is a little more complicated, but it's sort of similar to Plotter, which is um, a software a lot of writers like because it kind of um, sorts out all the different plot points on a line. So it's a little better for visual learners where um, I could tag different plots or different subplots with different colors and then they would show up uh, here if I wanted to visualize all my different subplots. I think that also works for the plot visualiz visualization where there's these different colors here. So I think, um, actually I think maybe this is Act 1, Act 2, Act 3, Act 4. So the first six chapters would show up here, and then the next six chapters would show up here. I think maybe that's how it works. Down here under Productivity, you've got this other panel, uh, which keeps track of your progress over a long period of time. Uh, and like I mentioned, I think this is sort of an overlooked feature. I know a lot of software that tries to do something like this, but it's not really suited for writing books. So the value of establishing a writing habit inside of a software like Scribble is that it would keep track of your writing habit. And that's a really important, powerful, long-term motivation uh, to keep working on your book because it does take uh, a lot of effort over a long period of time to see significant progress. So here you can set um, your own goals, whether you want to finish this book by a certain date. Like for example, I'm probably going to test this out for NaNoWriMo. So I would say, you know, by November 30th, um, I need to have 90,000 words of a new book. Measurable, achievable, realistic. So you could set different types of goals. So for example, I might say um, two hours a day writing 1,000 words a day. That'll kind of be up to you uh, based on your experience and based on your goals, but being able to set goals and then work on them and then have the system keep you on track by telling you, you know, how close you are. Uh, I think NaNoWriMo used to have something kind of like this, but a lot of people aren't using the NaNoWriMo website anymore because it's just less useful than it used to be. So if you've tried some writing software or if you've tried Scrivener, um, but you're looking for something new, maybe you haven't found any writing software that really works for you yet, uh, I definitely think that Scribble is an option. I do think it's going to take a little bit of work for you to get used to it, but the advantage is once you get used to a software that keeps track of your writing habits and your motivation, then it's going to feel a lot more supportive and a lot more productive than just having it all in Microsoft Word and just setting your own, like I'll set my own goals, but it's you know very hard to accomplish them on your own without external uh, positive reinforcement and accountability. So there's a seven day free trial if you just wanna play around with it. I would recommend just getting it for a month, especially if you're doing NaNoWriMo and seeing if it helps you to um, get NaNoWriMo done. Uh, I think 29 bucks a month is reasonable if it helps you to write more of your book. I think uh, all writers need a little bit more help organizing and support, uh, especially with long-term motivation in terms of writing goals and accountability. So this feels like a, a decent deal for me if I end up using it. And there's really no way to know whether or not it's going to work for you unless you um, attempt to use it. It takes about 30 days to establish a new writing habit, so it might take you a month just to feel like um, you're getting your value because you're actually doing the writing. Whereas I think with seven days, it's probably a little bit too short. You might play around with it a little bit, but you won't really feel comfortable enough to start 
actively using it. It is also um, a newer software. I don't think anyone else has really been talking about it yet. Uh, I believe it's, you know, it's working, it's available, but I don't think anyone else is really uh, talking about it yet because it's, uh, it's not well known. But the good news is that they are still, you know, working on it. So there's a suggestion box. They're pretty open to feedback. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts about, you know, whether or not this works for you or what features you like or dislike or issues or problems that you have had with it or um, any other writing software that you feel has really helped you. I keep a big list of my favorite writing software on my blog, which is up here under writing tips. I've got um, best writing apps. And, you know, I, I've tried just about everything and I found a few that work for me, but I think everyone's going to be a little bit different and have a different process. So it's worth um, trying out some software because if you do find the right software, it can make a really significant difference in your writing habits. I'll leave a link down below this video so that you can check this out uh, if you want to play around with it. Um, I do feel like, you know, you don't necessarily need a writing software. I think you can write with nothing but Microsoft Word. Um, but it's also true that most writers have some issues with uh, long-term motivation, procrastination, accountability, uh, and a lot of people are looking for some kind of a writing software that does a lot of the things that, that Scribble actually has been able to pull off. So I feel like um, it could be more popular than Scrivener if a lot of people start discovering it because I feel like it does a lot of things well, and I feel like a lot of the features, even if they're not quite there yet, um, they're definitely moving in the right direction. So once they, you know, a few more updates, um, I think it could be pretty powerful. And it's already, you know, got more than enough. It's a very robust uh, writing software. It's got a lot of features to unpack um, and get used to, but it does more than most other writing software uh, does. And I'm pretty intrigued by some of the things that they're trying to do which makes it, you know, worth uh, recommending. I also really like that they used my 24 chapter plot outline because I do think that's a super useful resource for um, creating strong fiction stories based on a universal uh, structure. Okay, thanks. That's it for now. Bye-bye.